you know, you're always going to be missing out on potential, but there's always potential to make money too. What's going on YouTube? Taylor Prentice back here with another video and I'm with my buddy Andrew and today we're going to talk about some of our biggest regrets when it comes to investing. My biggest regret comes to Bitcoin and I put $20 into Bitcoin when it was about $6,500. Uh, I didn't put any more and as you guys can tell that was a huge missed opportunity. Bitcoin is at a like above 60k here today so i missed out on like a 10x opportunity i kept my 20 dollars in there so that's like 200 bucks or something like that so i've done pretty well there i definitely missed out on a really good opportunity and my biggest regret isn't so much that i missed out on like a huge percentage gain or like lots of money that i could have made it's more that i didn't take the time to do the research in something that i was really interested in and thought had a lot of potential i like had this thought process that if Bitcoin, because uh, Bitcoin had got above 7,000 after I, like shortly after I bought in, and my thought process was if it drops back under 7,000, I'll buy more, but it never did drop below 7,000, so I just never bought in, and I totally missed that boat. So moral of the story is if you think something's going to go up a lot, don't be afraid to buy in just because it's a little more expensive than you think, because I've done that with a couple stocks like Skyworks Solutions. I know I was like waiting on it to hit like a certain dollar amount and it never hit that dollar amount, but then the stock went up like 40% and I missed out on a lot of money. I mean, it's, and it is hard with crypto too, because you can do all the research and understand it, but then still see that like, it's not really a safe investment because people are just buying it to raise the price it's hard to hold it safely you know like feel like you're doing something smart but i definitely have a bunch of regrets pretty similar especially with crypto i know dogecoin i i was balls deep in it with like five thousand dollars at 0 0.0034 and that would have went dumb you know if uh if i held it all the way but i i did like a short term basically day trade with it i think that's what i was doing because you could get in and out of those without it flagging your, your oh, PBT really? rule or whatever but it's, it's hard to look at my phone on that one and then in the stock market my biggest one would probably have to be beyond me when i when i was graduating ball state i went pretty deep into options for it like for it to reach a certain price because i had like studied you know, like I'd really researched it and I would even call up like restaurants and make, see if like they're selling it or really? if it's not working, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I was a big supporter of, of the product because like, I eat it and stuff. So I bought all these options and they expired when I graduated in December, but it was one month away from making me like 100K. Like, but it expired worthless. So yeah. it, that, that one really hurt to see it like go up right after it. But yeah, l like we were talking about before the camera was on, you know, you can't let that deter you missing out on an opportunity because, you know, you're always going to be missing out on potential, but there's always potential to make money too. So, you know, you can't, you can't let just like a loss or a missed thing, you know, ruin your, ruin your investing. One door closes, another door opens. That never really deterred me. Uh, which I've put some money into Ethereum ever since I missed out on like the whole Bitcoin run. And uh, I'm up right now a lot of money. I haven't sold any, so on paper, uh, I have no no gains or losses on Ethereum. My kind of missing out on Bitcoin did give me more motivation to buy into Ethereum. So like uh, Andrew was saying here, if you miss out on something, just take it as like a learning opportunity. Don't take it as like, I'm the worst investor ever because we all make mistakes and we all miss out on money and you're never going to time everything perfectly. And it's so. going to keep trading the next day, you know? So yeah, like, exactly. You know, uh, but like we also said, you know, it, it's more about learning and learning the percentage gain more than it is like how much you actually invest or what the price of it is. And with crypto, it's really hard because there are so many like Ethereum, Litecoin, like those were kind of the big ones. It's hard to really tell the differences and to see some have better utility, but then ones like Dogecoin and Shiba Inu pop, you know what I mean? Yeah, just because they gain like, popularity. Yeah, so like it's really hard to, to like do that safely, especially years ago. Oh, well, I missed out, but uh, the investment journey is still going pretty well, so. So what's your, what's your biggest uh, win? Uh, my biggest win is, okay, well, this is actually partially my biggest regret too which is funny Nordstrom stock I bought it at like $13 it's like I think it's like around 30 today uh I would like to start selling off some shares maybe around like 35 and 40 and uh it got to 40 at one point and 
I just was being greedy and didn't sell any shares. And then it dropped down to like 28, 29. It was just really beaten up because of coronavirus. So uh, I it bought was, into it. It was wild with the COVID. I know I followed Macy's really hard because it got down to literally like $4 or so uh, per share. And I had done a lot of research and realized that the main building that they own in New York, yeah. it was worth more than their whole market cap. So it's like on on paper like on their assets they have way more than they're even worth which, yeah you know i'm like you know warren buffett would say buy it you know because yeah. I mean? it's like you're buying pennies to the dollar and then to see it now it's almost at like 30 dollars or something insane and that's just since covid time so yeah that, yeah. that was probably a big miss for me too <laughs> i felt i felt crazy about that yeah i think nordstrom will stay or i think nordstrom will go above 40 i, I thought it was gonna hit above 40 by the end of this year we'll see uh why but, do you why do you like it uh just there's nobody really like since i'm really into fashion there's nobody oh. really in the fashion class that executes on like the level they do like you have like farfetch and brands like that but farfetch trades more expensive than nordstrom and it's been around like less than 10 years and it's nowhere close to as established as a brand as nordstrom is as far as uh fashion brands go they have a really big online presence and not a lot of like fashion retailers do well online yeah and that, that was the same with macy's the covid actually helped their online store yeah. like uh, get business but it's pretty similar to my my biggest win is also beyond me and it was like during covid I, I went balls deep listening to warren buffett and stuff of like you know f diversification you know like if you feel like you know what you're doing you don't want to over diversify and like spread everything out to where like you're not actually gaining all the ones you want to so i went deep in beyond me and wrote it like a full hundred percent and got out yeah i like really wanted to see nordstrom hit 200 percent like just in my app because i thought yeah. it'd be cool and i don't think it ever did i think it got like 190 like really close yeah. and i was just being greedy just yeah. so beyond me it's been like around where it was it's lower now than it was so i'm glad like i kind of got out really we were talking about this before uh, we started recording too but a lot of the most success that i've had didn't come from day trading it came from the longer holding positions you know and like long-term gains and like there's some stocks that i've held longer that have done better but that was like the real like speculation one that you know i was like pretty proud of like i've definitely day traded in the past and it it's not uh like i i wish that i had just held those stocks because a lot of the times you know you'll trade them for like a percentage and or a few percents but then like years later you're like what was well, i doing moral of the story hodl uh learn from your mistakes if you mess up don't worry about it because it's going to happen to everybody. It's just part of investing. And nobody has a crystal ball to really tell like, oh, it's it's going to go, you know, it's going to go up or down by this certain time, you know, or like to know when to get out or whatever. Like you just have to sort of rely on, you know, the information that you can find and like make it make sense a little bit. Yeah, at the end of the day, it is like somewhat a guess or like a bet, which I hate saying that investing is like a bet because even as if you do all the research in the world, things might not go the way that you had planned. So, but it's but it's it's different in the sense that like at the casino, you know, like you're if you bet on black on roulette, you know, you're betting on that one spin. So it's like it, on options, it's more gambling because you're putting a time limit yeah. on it. But with stocks, you know, you can hold that sucker for a hundred years and then you just hope that GDP and the whole economy is doing yeah. better and everything kind of goes up. It's hard because of the overvaluation, you know, like some of the yeah. Like three three trillion dollar companies are are what's next, you know. Their book value isn't even close to it. And a lot of companies, you know, like you can look at their fundamentals and it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know, like so it's, Nikolai or yeah. Before. I mean, most most of them. Like it's if you like if you go by the Warren Buffett method, it can be hard to really use that to find stocks yeah, today. Because you know he I mean? he definitely wasn't up to date on like tech stocks, like stuff like that. Because because they expect like so much growth it's like they're valued over 10 years yeah, out you know yeah. what i mean so it's like you could do all the research and then it's still you could deem it like oh this is way overvalued and then it goes up 100 percent. yeah know? So it's, it's like amazon has always traded at like a i think like a 50 or higher p ratio yeah so it's just going crazy but they're still growing yeah you know, it's still insane. going up like nuts what else can they get their claws into you know yeah. but, that's pretty much it so i hope you guys learned something from this uh if you guys have any questions about like our personal investing journey or story just leave a comment down below or hit, hit us up on instagram but uh thank you so much for watching if you could hit that like and subscribe we'd really appreciate it and we will see you next time thanks for watching 
If you guys are new to investing and want to try it out, we recommend Robinhood, which you can find his affiliate link in the description. For more advanced traders, I would recommend Webull because it allows you to short stocks and it gives you a little more in-depth analysis and different chart studies on there. And that affiliate link is in the description as well. And you could do both of them and get, get all the free stocks, baby.